Welcome back guys, I've got a really cool video for you today. Myself and my good friend Anderson, Films by AW, who you'll recognise from the podcast, Help I'm a Camera Nerd. We got a chance to go and meet Carl from Pro AV and have a tour around the showroom. Really, really fun. We got to play with loads of cool kit, lighting, camera, lenses. Now, if you want to see both parts of this, you're going to have to follow my channel and Films by AW. Over on his channel, you'll be able to see part one, my channel part two. So if you want to see the full thing, make sure you subscribe to both channels. Now, as well as the tour around Pro AV, we also got a chance to sit down with Carl and do a podcast. Really, really cool podcast. If you haven't heard the podcast yet, then subscribe. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. It's my turn now. We're going to, I think, talk a bit more about, look at some of the camera kit and stuff. That's what I'd be into. So if I came here... I would be like, I'd be wanting to try lenses. You're not looking at the PTZ. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at, what's the most expensive kit you've got that I can get? <laughs> so they've got kind of lenses out here. I've had zines yeah. before. These are, what are these ones then? Are these yeah, they're like zines a, too. So they're zines CS. So they're the newer so models. they're the newer ones with the sort of carbon fiber Ooh, they design. Nice. They're very similar optically, but much smaller, mm, yeah. much more. Um, they've got little glow-in-the-dark markings Ooh, on them and stuff. glow-in-the-dark markings for exactly. focus pullers. Who doesn't like a glow-in-the-dark So mark? you don't need that little, like, usually you get a little light that you just put on top of the camera, like a USB light or something. <laughs> mm, yeah. And do these ones have the kind of huge barrel? Probably not. No, right? not as much. Because the old zines, we were talking about this, we the 50 mil. We were looking at the 50, weren't has we? Has a if huge... The 50. So it still does, but nowhere near as much because the lens is much smaller now. Yeah, so it's you, like a cavern inside. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you could have your morning coffee in this one. <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't be good for the lens, but you could do it. <laughs> that We've... focus ring goes all the way around. That's a 360 focus ring right there. Yeah, that's something that Sam Young are always very good on, is giving good focus um, rings. This is one of their new ones, actually. This is their VAF lens with their manual focus adapter. That's getting quite a lot of attention at the moment. So that's an autofocus lens. Um, like that, so that's oh, a Stills that. Autofocus Cine Prime Ooh, this um, is, with this a, um, so on an FX3 or an A7S or an FX6 or whatever. And then you get full autofocus for your interview or whatever, and then you want manual focus, you stick that on and lock it down, and then that automatically turns this focus ring into an iris ring, and you get a proper manual focus with hard, stops, hard stops on either end. And so as far as I'm aware, and, and the important thing is you turn on autofocus back in the camera right. and then this doesn't do anything. And so you can still autofocus with that attached. Oh, that's amazing. Because I know one of the things, like what we're filming on the RS3 Pro here, if you've got the LiDAR mm -hmm. sensor, mm -hmm. you need hard stop lenses. It yes. won't work with, with well, like with any continuous focus, focus yeah. really. If you're doing anything with a, a focus system that knows where you're focused. Yeah. So from down to a simple, you know, um, non-wireless one where you're just marking with a marker pen on the on the ring up to something fancy like the lidar one if you've got any of that you need hard stops because yeah. otherwise you just go slightly past close mm. or far focus yeah yeah, yeah. all of your markings all of your information are completely yep. wrong so and that's also a really long focus ring yes. so it obviously makes it a lot easier to pull focus yep. when the focus is spread out over a, a bigger distance so a lot of these stills lenses obviously the focus is you don't have a yeah, very, very a long twitchy. to pull. So what options, anamorphic so, options do you do? A couple of interesting ones. I haven't got a huge amount in the room right now. We've got the Proteuses, which you saw a big chunky one earlier. This is the even bigger, Ooh. even chunkier yeah. 85 millimeter. Look at this. Absolutely beautifully optical. They almost, they but, remind me of the Ari Master Prime anamorphics yeah, they because they are it's big. big, big lenses. <laughs> Probably heavier than the camera itself, but I'm sure really beautiful lenses. So they're very nice. Um, as a comparison, that is also Lauer. That's their Nanomorph, wow, that's which is trade. their cheap. You know, that's sort of six thousand pounds a lens. This mm -hmm. is five hundred pounds yeah. a lens. That kind of price difference. You swap you there. Uh, yes. Ooh. Got it. Okay. Mine. Wow, that is. I mean, just the weight difference and the size difference is. You could easily put this on a gimbal. You know, the, even on a Steadicam with one of these, you're going to be looking at one of the higher <laughs> Steadicams yeah. to be able to rock yes. that weight with the camera as well. Although the cameras have gotten a lot lighter. That is crazy. That is crazy how small that is and how light it is. And they're not as good optically. You know, there's a, there's a lot of them now. Mm. Uh, have yeah, you ever played with any of those sort of... Great Joy. Great Joy, yeah. very similar. Yeah, yeah. Suri or... But quite Suri. big. The Great Joys are quite long. 
I've, yeah, like, okay. This mm -hmm. is probably half the These length. Are really compact. If not a third of the length once you take that off. Yeah, that's a really small, nice option. These that I film are doing really nice stuff at the moment. That's yeah. some of these. Uh, in fact, they've got a big sale on them at the moment. Yeah, these are. Um, but yeah, these are the Pictors. There's also the Carter Zooms um, and the Gnosis Cinema Macro Primes. These that are probably one of our best selling Around 2.8 as well. They're really, really good. So that is 50 to 125. Yep, so that's the that's telly. The this is, they've got two different wide options. These are Super 35. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a 25 to 55 in the middle. Really? Yes, so that's your main, your normal one. That's your telly. Because I your... suppose that you could probably get by, I mean, you could, you could almost just get by with these two lenses. I mean, you're mm -hmm. jumping from 30 to 50, I guess, which maybe you want, you want to cover that with Sigma Cines. Yeah. If you had one of those Sigma Cine zooms, that's 18 to 35 and then 55 to 100. Yeah, people, I like people did it with those two. I do like the the um, Sigma, right? Sigma eighteen to thirty five is probably my favourite owned lens, just because yep. it's seen it goes all the way down to one point eight, and I've never tried the fifty to one hundred that they do. And the only mm -hmm. downside I'd say to those lenses is they don't have any optim um, stabilisation built in. But I mean that's fine for me. I've just got to hold the camera a little bit steadier. We haven't really talked about tripods, and you guys have got mm. like a whole range of tripods. Mm. We, I think we talked briefly about the Flowtech is obviously a great yes. tripod. I normally um, have one here, but it's um, out with a customer at the moment. But that's what I normally use. Yeah. So I use the Flowtech legs with an e-image head actually. Mm. Um, e-image are, are also one of the brands that we do. They're actually the largest tripod manufacturer in the world. So they're a Chinese I think I've got, company. I've got I've got an e-image tripod. It's like my second yeah. tripod that I have. Yeah. Very similar legs to these. So what's this one here? This is, this looks like a, kind of, I've got a Manfrotto one that's very similar to this. Yeah. Um, that's a bit of a weird combination, that one actually. That's a Sackler Ace head, Ace XL head on more e-image legs. So this is, uh, these are the e-image solo style legs, which I think are some of my favorite ones in the e-image range um, with, a, with a Sackler tripod. Why? I'm not quite sure but that's the combination that's there. <laughs> so how, how do you, because th the thing about the Manfrotto one, and I'll find out what it is, but it's got a big, I, I take a big issue with it, is that you see these bits here, which sure. you can kind like of extend, extend it. So like these that. ones seem like they lock in a lot better than the Manfrotto ones. I'm constantly mm. knocking the Manfrotto one. Well, that's not good. No, and the last thing you want to happen is obviously the legs to spread. So it's, uh, yeah. you just take a bit of extra caution with it. But, yep. but this seems like you just, yeah, you see, you're not yep. gonna, you're not gonna accidentally can... knock that. Exactly. Which is nice. Yeah, that's a nice. Exactly. And they're nice. And they're, they're heads I really like. So particularly this one. This one, the tens. So this is slightly bigger. Yeah. But the 06, I like particularly because it's um, the right kind of payload for um, the average camera, mm -hmm. you know, the C7T, Komodo, FX6, that kind of stuff, any black magic stuff outside of the bigger reverses. Um, but it's very smooth. And the, the, the three resistance is really quite resistant, mm -hmm. if you like. And it goes all the way to Ooh. completely nothing, zero. But your whip pans. Exactly. And counterbalance just having decent counterbalance with stops yeah. on it makes a huge distance difference. If anyone is not counterbalancing your tripods, you really need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like nice balancing that a gimbal. everything's there. I've got, I've had tripods in the past that like have the locking mechanism on this side, in but, a weird then, place. but then it's like, what am I going to do? And Manfrotto are quite guilty of that actually. Yep. So this is a Manfrotto. They this are good tripods, but they make good tripods, but. And they're cool. Like one thing I love about the Nitrotex is this continuous counterbalance system is fantastic. But what they is... sort of they hide the locking knobs in funny places like this big one here. Whereas I, I just like having a simple. Yeah. Maybe like, it's so you don't accidentally knob. knock it. Maybe that's the Maybe. reason. What is going on with these big beefy bits on the legs? So here? these are their Manfrotto's fast legs. So this is sort of their version right. of the Flowtech, if you like. That might be a bit of a crude way to put it. I'm sure Satchel wouldn't like that, but. Just one thing like that, and then you've got you've got movement all the way it's up nice. and down. Nice big clamps. That probably sounded awful on your microphones, but it's nice though. It's a nice. Op I mean, it's nice that like more tripod manufacturers are thinking about mm. single operators when exactly. raising and lower tripods and stuff like that, making it easy. And Flowtech obviously is up here, which yeah. I do prefer. But you know, this has the same big sort of quick clamps like that, which is nice and easy. They're nice. They're, these are. Good legs. 
Let's feel I much up. prefer these legs to some yeah. of their heads. Do you know what? They're surprisingly really light. They're when bad, when you see these big chunky bits, you're like, oh, is that going to be a bit heavy to carry? But that's surprisingly mm -hmm. light. And what is this bit for? That's just for... That's counterbalance. counterbalance. So that's their continuous counterbalance system. Right. So it's like a dial rather than, you saw on the image one there, you've got, you've got steps of one to yeah. six or one to 10 or whatever. And that's the way Sackler do it, Miller do it, all yeah. that kind of companies. Whereas Manfrotto on their Nitrotex done a continuous counterbalance so you can precisely dial it in. So it's slower when you're changing from one lens to another or something like that, but you can get it precise, mm -hmm. which, is, which is nice. This right here, is it yes. flexible at all? It sure is. So you can kind of bend it. Absolutely. You could really fit that into like anywhere, basically. Okay. You know, if you've got a tight space, you want to yeah. get a fridge shot and you want loads of light coming out the fridge. Yeah. That's well, super bright. You ever worked with flexible panels before? Do you know what? Yeah. I've been on set with people that have had them, mm -hmm. but I've never used them, no. They are super useful. Yeah. For anything like that, like, obviously like those specialist like fridge shots that yeah. like you were talking about, sure. But or even a car. In a car. I mean, if you want to Velcro that to the, the car. There's, is there any kind there looks like there's a Velcro system yeah, here. Yeah, you can Velcro it. So you, you can, can gaff rotate it. I mean, they, they weigh nothing. Yeah. But what I really like about them is just how lightweight they are. So that for is, booming, yeah. You know, you stick it on a C-stand boom arm, something like that. You can, yeah, that's true. you can get them really close to your talent. If you're doing an interview, yeah. you put a dome diffuser on this. Something I do quite a lot for like two person interviews. Because in this kind of situation with two of us next to one another, mm -hmm. I like the light to be on that side of the line yeah. rather than the same side as the camera. Yeah, yeah. I find that side always looks yeah. really flat and boring. Yeah, whereas as true. soon as it's here, it's amazing. Yeah. So how do you get a light here in between us? With something like that boomed over the top, it produces a really nice soft light. It's really easy to boom because it's so lightweight. Flexible LEDs are amazing for that. And what I like about it as well is if you're rigging this above actors, there's no danger. I love lightweight gear because, you know, traveling in and out of London, which you do for jobs all the time. Absolutely. You're, you never want to drive because you will get a fine. <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> you'll get a fine. So you're always looking to just get the, the train if you can, or, you know, travel without a car. Yep. And for that, if you're, you know, one man operation, um, you really need kit that you can carry, that yep. you can carry yourself. So you're kind of looking for lightweight solutions on Completely all of your agree. kit. And Tube lights are great for that because yeah. you get such a nice soft light in such a yep. long, things that wraps around the face really nicely. Yes, they don't collapse down, mm -hmm. but they're quite long and thin, so yeah. you, can, you can store them really easily. Flex lights are great for that. They just require a bit more setup time. Yeah. And cobs and soft boxes, you know, those little mm. eye footage ones that I talked about earlier. They are amazing. They're fantastic yeah. for that. You can collapse the soft box right down and just have a couple of those in a little camera style bag yeah. and you've got a whole three point lighting kit. Let's have a look into the, the lighting corner. Yeah, I mean, this thing is an absolute mess because we've got so much stuff in on loan at the moment, but there's some hidden amongst all the junk there is in a couple of boxes there's some really interesting stuff so let's, like that oh again more godox stuff just because they happen to have lent us a load of stuff at the Look moment at this. but this is a 600 watt one by one panel it okay. is absurdly absurdly bright it really really punches that thing and like, this this would be uncomfortable to be brighter than you said brighter than the s30 the, oh, the sky like, panel like i'd be surprised if it wasn't three or four times brighter than wow the s30. it's because that's a soft light, of yeah, course. Yeah, it is, yeah. This is a hard light. Have you ever seen the Gemini 1x1 hard? No. It's sort of their version of that. Right. But this is daylight only, and that's RGB. Okay. And you lose a lot of the brightness by going RGB. So yes, you, yes, you do, yeah. yeah. And, it's, and that's also 300 watt. This is 600 watt. Wow. So this thing is absurd. Then what else have we got? So these are also... Uh, that's, you've also picked up another Godox, yep. but that, <laughs> that's their 200 watt. So that's right. their ordinary, Much if you lighter. like. Ordinary range. Yeah. Um, that everyone's familiar with. We've got a bunch more eye footage here. Um, some of their sort of medium sized ones. That's one of the Amaran tubes. It's a lightsaber. Um, Aperture Nova, Aperture 300D, oh, sorry, 600D um, Pro. Um, tiny little Nan light. This thing's really cool. Is this the C or the B? This is the B, but they also do this in a C, so a full RGB color one. Little Nan, we haven't talked about Nan light at all. They're a nice, yeah, they really very nice company small. doing very cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, these would be ideal for like, if you're going in to shoot like a, an interview or something like that. Absolutely. If you're jumping on and off tubes, yeah. you want to be taking that, not one of the, not like the 600 watt panel. Yeah. <laughs> I love this adapter here. 
for you to yes. add more add more on if you want to if you need multiple lights <laughs> and get a bit more power so this has got to be there kind of that's the like their sky like the, panel yeah, yeah sky absolutely panel. so the light panel i really like the gemini range i think it's nicer design than the sky panels actually is um, this um bi color or is it like full rgb full rgb as well full rgb mm. studio lights these gemini's they do a one by one and two by one soft and hard on both of them yeah um brilliant lights really nice really nice lights I mean, yeah, sky panels are one of my favorite lights to just have because it's so, use it for so many different things. Mm. So, but they're so expensive. They're obviously like four thousand pound, I think. So, but to be honest, for an owner operator, if you're in a studio, yeah, they're, they're brilliant. That yeah, kind of yeah. form factor. Most owner operators nowadays are going for the sort of Cobb style lights yeah, and yeah. then diffusing them in different ways. Yeah, you know, something like this, for example, this huge Manfrotto, um, just just um, I can't remember what they call it now, but Cine Scrim, something like that. It just clips on and off. It folds up really easily yeah. to touch together. That's super light Shuck as well. a big light through that, and that is way softer than any of these panels. I mean, this isn't even a big, beefy standard. No, that's a regular that. light stand. So that is like... Absolutely. And I love shining like hard source, like high source lights through something like this. Gives yes. you beautiful light. It's I have been looking for one of these <laughs> for ages. So this is sort of their, their pop-up reflector right. equivalent if you like so the sort of redesign you know the old five in one yeah nobody can get them back down of to course, a small yeah. circle <laughs> yeah you know, i love those the first years at uni with yep. type thing this just pops up like a tent and so you clip all of these together and then you just clip on on the sheet of diffusion and so it really doesn't take very long at all and you end up with a huge like one meter across um, sheet of diffusion to easily hold above your talent to diffuse direct sunlight to mount onto a stand to blast a light through in the same way as you would with something bigger like that but we use these outside for piece to cameras and stuff yeah. like that and we just hold it above you yeah, like that's that nice. and just blocks the sunlight off of your face for direct sunlight but it packs down so small because yeah. of that pop-up yeah yeah i mean thing. that bag's tiny yeah you can just chuck it in your camera bag it's brilliant i mean you could build like the ultimate dream compact kit here of like see how much you can get i love That'd like a nice bundle to put together yeah actually. packing like bags and having like i've got probably two to three different um camera bags mm -hmm. you've got my big camera bag i've got my medium and then my small and i love like seeing how much you can get in perfectly kind of yeah top down view of your camera bag look at the tiny tripod add here. this to our compact yeah. bundle yeah but this is really lightweight little tripod legs and mounted with that image head that i was talking about earlier yeah. so all the counterbalance everything like that but feel how light that is oh, yeah compared to like your flow tech or something like that yeah and it's so small and that is a heavy down. duty small tripod as well that's yeah and that, that know, will take a that's that's not a flimsy little no, thing no. that will take your fx6s your komodos yeah. your c70s that kind of stuff and that's what we use it for here a lot that's a video that's got to happen eventually is like the best compact camera bundle that you can you can buy yep we can set that up yeah, yeah that is nice that's nice i've given you the wrong tripod it's actually this tripod i'm using over here is yeah. the one i meant to give you so with it locked like that you just have to unloosen it a little bit and then you press that button and that whole thing comes off ah. take the head off like that really really nifty can you dig it up on my tongue let's just see that okay Yeah, that is much quicker than <laughs> screwing one of those things on. Let's, uh, can we just take this camera off mm -hmm. so I can feel feel the weight of these? Let's see how compact they go. We, do, we sell this one as a little bundle online. And since I put it together, not many customers have bought it because it's a hard little bundle to find with brands that people haven't heard of. But every single member of staff I've shown it to like this <laughs> has went out and bought one. <laughs> yeah, that is like, that's, that's probably a similar, similar weight, but that is, that's nice. It's a nice bundle, that. Yeah, and you're not really in, you know, I wouldn't be so concerned. Some of these really lightweight tripods, like the one I brought here, sure. you've got that concern that if you accidentally kick it as you walk past, yeah, it's, it's going down. Fine. But this is like sturdy. Yep. You got the camera on there as well. Yep. It's nice. Let's open it up. And we use it. We use it all the time. And then, you know, this isn't a small little camera rig or a cheap little camera rig. And so this is what I'm actually using to, to film my videos. Canon C70. 50 millimeter RF prime, a wireless video sender, and my AVX transmitter on the top. But yeah, it's not a, not a lightweight no. little setup on a very small little lightweight tripod. Yeah, I mean, if it takes the weight of this, you could it could easily take the weight weight of pretty much 
any camera that Komodo. I'm using, you know, Absolutely. Komodo. Bro. Yeah. Oh, easily, easily. easily yeah. yeah, and that's, yeah, that's a nice head as well. Oh, it's like Toys R Us for me in here. <laughs> like grown up <laughs> Toys R Us. The credit card, calling out to you. <laughs> credit card. That's why they won't give me an increase. <laughs> Well, that's it guys, that was a really fun tour. Let me know if you liked it. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you wanna see next. We'd like to do some more tours around some cool places. So if you have any ideas, then just drop a comment and let us know. But thanks for watching guys, see you next time.